We've got the cantilever quite close to the surface, probably within 100 to 200 microns. So I'm going to explain some of these uh, scan parameters. So scan size at the moment is 500 nanometers. We'll leave that as the initial scan size. And we'll increase that um, as we start to scan. Aspect ratio, that controls the uh, size of the image in terms of whether you want to image a square or a rectangle. We'll leave that as one to one. X and Y offset just means we're in the center of the image when we start to scan. Scan angle is uh, the angle at which the cantilever scans relative to the surface. This is something we can change. Uh, we'll leave it at zero degrees to start with. That's the standard nominal scan angle uh, the company suggests. Scan rate is essentially the speed at which the cantilever scans the surface. Samples per line is 256 points and 256 lines. So I like to keep that 512 but that's up to the user what they'd like to use. Then we have the gains. We have the integral gain, which is what the instrument is most sensitive to. We have the proportional gain, which the instrument isn't quite as sensitive to, but is still um, an important uh, gain to adjust. The set point, which the computer will initially control. The drive frequency, which we've already set in the auto-tune menu. And then the drive amplitude. That's essentially the energy that has to be applied to the cantilever to vibrate it to reach the resonant frequency amplitude. Now I'm close to the surface. I'll now tune the cantilever. So I hit tune. Auto tune. see our optical image here and now I'm ready to do an engage. So I'll hit engage and the computer now does a controlled engage. You can actually see the motor moving down here. And as the cantilever gets closer to the surface you'll see this image start to come into focus. So this is currently scanning a 5 micron area. We put it up to 10. So that's 10 microns at 1 hertz. I'll now slow it down to 0.5 hertz. Now I'll increase the scan size to 20 microns. So now we'll go to 40 microns. need to adjust the Z scale. Currently the Z scale is set at 14 nanometers and the depth of the square holes in this surface is about 180. So I need to increase the Z scale to about, let's make it 300 nanometers, so we can now see the square holes. So every time this red arrow here moves up, it's scanning a line and that's what you can see here. So this is showing you each of the cross sections as it scans. The blue line is the forward trace, the red is the retrace. Ideally we would like those two lines to overlap, to be basically on top of each other. Because that isn't the case right now, it means our feedback parameters are not optimised. Scan rate, integral gain, proportional gain, and set the main ones that it's sensitive to is scan rate, integral gain, and amplitude set. As I adjust those parameters, hopefully the red and the blue line will start to overlap. And if you look at the image, you'll see there's some real blurring here on the right hand side of the square hole. And so currently the, um, you can record either the forward trace or the retrace. We're currently recording the retrace but you can choose which, whatever direction you want. Ideally, they should be the same. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can slow down the scan. If I slow the scan down, let's go to 0.4 hertz. 
you'll see the red and blue lines start to overlap a little bit better. Just a touch. We're already scanning pretty slow. I don't want to scan much slower than this. Um, of course you could if you wanted to, but thermal drift might become a problem. The next thing we'll adjust will be the integral gain. I'll go from 1 to 2 for that, and you'll see a reasonably significant change. So you can now see them overlapping a lot better. Now if I go too high on this number, we'll start to get noise appearing on the image. Still, still not too bad. We can probably go quite high on these structures because they're um, 180 nanometers deep. For a very, very flat surface, you'll notice um, noise due to the integral gain at a much lower uh, number. Whatever you choose for your integral gain, keep your proportional gain the same, or simply double whatever you use for the integral gain. I've got the integral gain at 5, I'll keep the proportional gain at 5. Time for an AFM image will depend on your scan rate and the number of uh, scan lines, but typically it can be anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. I'll increase the integral gain again. I can keep increasing this number until I start to see noise in my image. And sometimes we get these spike artifacts that can be due to the integral gain being too high. And I can just see a little bit of noise now creeping into the uh, tops of these structures. So I'm now going to reduce the integral gain until this smooths out. So I'll drop it down to 7. Down to six, drop it down to five. And so the other thing that you can adjust is the amplitude set point. So this is basically how hard you're tapping the surface. And you can see up here on the image that the edges of each of the squares now is much more well defined. If I increase the amplitude set point, then we're going to be moving the surface away from the cantilever. There will come a point where if I increase it so high, the tip and the surface will disengage and you'll notice this line trace will become unstable and you'll notice up here that the image will become unstable. As you can see there, the tip is now not quite getting close to disengaging from the surface. You'll now see the image as well starting to become unstable. Continue to increase the amplitude set point, and now we're out of feedback. The tip is no longer um, touching the surface as it's tapping, as it's oscillating. The trace has now gone completely flat, and the image basically now, there's nothing there. If I now reduce the amplitude set point, I'm bringing the surface closer to the tip. We'll get to a point where the tip will just start to tap the surface and we'll start to see something on our trace and you'll start to see the image reform again. If I reduce the amplitude set point too far, I can potentially damage the tip. So I don't want to keep reducing and reducing and reducing. I want to get to a point where I'm happy with the image, but not keep going down. Now we're getting these sort of spikes here, which is an artifact. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to adjust scan rate, integral gain, and set point to try and get rid of these sort of artifacts. If the tip's a little bit blunt, and sometimes you get a strong interaction between that and the surface, and that can cause that can cause these kind of artifacts. What I've done to reduce those artifacts is basically I've scanned slower and I've reduced the integral gain. AFM images can often have tip artifacts or scanner artifacts. While it's scanning at the moment, we have a real-time plane fit on.
The data we're saving has no processing on it at all. So when, when we open up the data, there's more processing you need to do.